two seismic shifts in the world of AI and marketing today. Already we were shocked by this announcement from Google that their new Gemini 1.5 is coming very soon and the most crucial difference between it and other current large language models that we're used to is the fact that its context window is 1 million tokens compared to 128,000 for GPT-4 and 32,000 for Gemini Pro. Now I'm no expert on how tokens actually work but I do know that 1 million is a huge amount more than 128,000. But basically it means the amount of source data you can give it and the overall awareness of information it's given is much bigger. So if you've ever been working with ChatGPT and you find it forgets half of what you've just done, maybe you've tried to upload a PDF to it using a plugin and it's okay for referencing little bits of it, but it doesn't really get specifics. So if you ask for a specific part of chapter eight, then it does tend to struggle as opposed to just trying to get an overall vibe of the book from the introduction. So in theory, this should end that 10 or 11 hours of video. So it should be able to consume the whole of Lord of the Rings and be able to work with that with each individual prompt. So those were people were saying this might be it. Maybe this is where Google finally gets back ahead of OpenAI. However, in the last couple of hours, OpenAI has responded with Sora, which is really quite shocking. If you're in the state of worrying about AI, then maybe look away now. But at the same time, even though I tend to be quite fearful of AI myself, I find this new revelation really quite inspiring and exciting. So we've heard about creating video from text. That's really nothing new. But instead of slideshows and text overlaid on different bits of AI art, which is basically the best we've had so far, or creating some AI art in mid-journey and then animating it with a separate plugin, we now have some absolutely incredible cinematic video coming from just a single prompt. So this is the video that's being shared the most at the moment. A stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm glowing neon and animated city signage. She wears a black leather jacket, long red dress and black boots and carries a black purse. She wears sunglasses and red lipstick. She walks confidently and casually. The street is damp and reflective, creating a mirror effect of the colourful lights many pedestrians walk about. So already we're seeing the same, a continuation of the same things we've seen with eWare. The more specific you are, the better it is. And the reflections are really compelling, as is the outfit. It's quite entertaining really that we still have the issue with text that we've had before with any form of AI art. Can't get the branding on the sunglasses right. But what a small detail compared to just how captivating this really is. So I've often thought in the back of my mind for quite a while that if we're able to generate AI art so well, surely we're not that far from being able to create multiple hundreds of different frames based on the same image but animating it throughout to create a film and that's exactly what we're seeing here so if we scroll through these examples from OpenAI the quality really is incredible so really just leave us questioning when this actually goes live what on earth is that going to do to my YouTube channel for a start but also everything else in terms of the media that we know about huge implications for marketing definitely huge implications of course for SEO and making money online you can we can do programmatic SEO with film and Sora based on what we currently see. So what happened about a year and a half ago when ChatGPT came out and people started building these spreadsheets connecting to the OpenAI API and therefore creating blog posts en masse very easily. It looks like we're going to have that with video very soon. These prompts are so simple and the results really dramatic. In this case, just a couple of lines for the prompt. Beautiful landscape here. Nice animation here. A fellow entrepreneur said they really like driving with their nephew, I think it was in the passenger seat and he'd use Zapier to connect Siri on his phone to OpenAI, which basically meant that he could get his nephew to basically ask Siri to write a story and include this and this and this. And whilst driving in the car, the car stereo would then read out uh, this story that the child had created. So going to be very similar once we introduce film into that as well. Pirate ships in a cup of, cup of coffee, that's an interesting one. It's so amazing how accurate the humans are in this. Bear in mind, it wasn't that long ago that AI was just messing up all the fingers of every human and now we have pretty convincing humans i'm not seeing anything wrong with any of these so far not just in image but actually in motion as well so where is it currently at and how do you get involved so far we can't do anything with it sora is becoming available to red teamers to assess critical areas for harms or risks so granting access to a number of visual artists designers and filmmakers to gain feedback in order to improve it even further and of course they're working on abuse. I really like this one. Historical footage of California during gold rush. I think this paragraph really does sum up everything we've seen in these videos that complex scenes with multiple characters, different types of motion, but also not just the exact wording of the prompt, 
but the actual context of the physical world. So if we just take that example of the California Gold Rush, it's got the sense of the architecture, the clothing. So it really feels a lot more advanced than what we're used to with AI imagery, where you give it a prompt and you get a very literal representation of that prompt back rather than any deeper exploration of what that prompt actually means and was asking for, if not explicitly. So a big section on safety. So they're very careful in misinformation, hateful content and bias. They're also aiming to include some sort of metadata watermarking. How good that's going to be, I don't know. They're really talking about adding watermarking to images, but if you take a screenshot, then that metadata doesn't show. So I'm always very dubious about any form of watermarking. As we know so far from SEO, there's not been a reliable AI content checker created yet. That's why we can rank AI content so well on Google. Now, so far, what an absolute tease. No sign of when this is going to happen, but a sense that it's here already and we're just not being allowed to access it because of course it's going to be totally abused and that's where i'm saying they're thoroughly testing it to breaking point before they release it and even then it's going to be an iterative process of getting real world use and data when it launches so really exciting time i'm sorry i don't have any more to give you in this video but it was simply too good not to share and i think like with all ai innovation yes it's scary but equally there's going to be that brief window of the beginning of early adopters where those of us who are on top of it can figure it out, work out how to use it to our best advantage. And there's huge scope, not just for making money online, but to really achieve incredible things with it.